So it's finally time for season two. I've heard great things about this season. I've heard that this season and the next are where things sort of ramp up, where the tone sort of shifts, where they finally start to reveal some of the more important elements of the characters. Because so far, I feel like in season one, things were kept kind of closely to the chest. So what I want out of this season is I want more character development. I want intense plot action. And I want Claudia and Soren to catch up with the egg gang. So here we go. What is going on? Oh, it's Amaya. You got this. This is a pretty epic start to this episode. Volcano battle against elves. <laughs> Damn. Damn. She just killed that elf. She just killed that other elf. I think I saw this sort of one of the end credit scenes. Damn, this is cool. <laughs> well, we've seen her use her shield really well. Oh, what? It can't cut it? Whoa! That was awesome! That was such an incredible opening. I was not prepared for that. I thought it was gonna be like the the intro screen with the But no, it was it was great. Book 2, Sky, Chapter 1, A Secret and a Spark. It feels like a lifetime since we left home, but it's only been a week. A week? So each episode was one day? That's crazy. That's quite the week they had. Rayla is kind and good. She's fearless, fast, strong. I'm daring. Also oh, daring. Hey! Nice. Well, I consider myself quite daring. Beautiful. Oh. Quite. You're writing a letter to the king. Oh yeah, this still hasn't been resolved. Ah, the lies continue. In journeys, there are always surprises. Things never go as you plan. Yeah, nothing is real. <laughs> Based on these examples. Yeah, come to think of it, that was all a lie too. The lies are endless in the show. Tell the truth, Rayla. Just not on the ice this time. We're taking care of someone new. The most powerful creature in the entire world. His hair is so weird. I don't know what to think of it. <laughs> there have been sightings of terrifying shadows in the clouds, flying high above the towns and cities of Catullus. War dragons. Oh, there's like a, a council. General Amaya reports that elven forces are gathering on the Zadian side of the breach. Humanity could face extinction if we don't work with the other four kingdoms to do something. None of that matters while we have no king. That's sort of bizarre. I kind of find myself agreeing with Viren. If it's true that elves are actually gathering at the border, the hierarchy sort of seems less important because once you have an elf attack, if they're anything like the Moon Shadow Elves or the elf we saw with that crazy sword, there's going to be no more pentarchy anyway. But maybe the council just doesn't trust Viren. Maybe, you know, he's not very good at hiding his ambitions. He's sort of all over the place. It's really interesting to see because so many times villains appear in a story just perfectly formed, like they have the perfect plan, they know exactly what to do. Viren, I feel like he's kind of winging it, <laughs> like he's kind of learning as he goes, which is kind of true. It's like fiction aside, you would imagine this would be tough, right? Like Viren's juggling a lot of things at the same time. He's a smart guy, but a lot of this is a gamble. There's a part of me that likes to see people succeed at difficult things in a way that feels truthful and, or and organic. And so I kind of want to see like the depiction of how Viren handles this. Am I rooting for Viren? Uh-oh. I guess weighing the two, I'll choose Viren's butterfly crack and mirror obsession over like bureaucracy. It's more interesting. Come and get it, everyone. Is it real? Don't play with me like that. And don't tell me that the food was inside of us the whole time. You named her Fifi? Is Fifi real? You have the best food up here. Oh, they got the jelly tarts. Secret. Well, my secret is is that it's all fake. No, what? You're actually eating grubs. Uh, oh, you must mean grub. Like as in, wow, this is some good grub. No. Yes, just let him believe. Those are grubs. Why bother with the illusion if you're just gonna tell them it's grubs? This woman is evil. Is the woman real? <laughs> uh, they don't look that bad. I can slish and slash with both swords again. Nice callback. The longer we stay here, the higher the risk. The night the Dragon Prince was born, I sensed something amiss. Those strange purple wisps, dark right, forces are pursuing you. Dark forces of Claudia and Soren. But Zim, he's so little. He still needs to learn how to fly. <laughs> you seem to have a special connection to the Dragonling. Perhaps you could teach him? 
That's because Ezreal is the Dragon Prince. <laughs> a lot of people are getting upset that I'm saying that. Titles can have multiple meanings. Scrubs. Community. Family Matters. Simba's Pride. The King's Speech. Spider-Man Homecoming. Vice. X-Men First Class. Legend of Zelda. A Link to the Past. I know the dragon is the Dragon Prince. Ezrin is also the Dragon Prince. I'm gonna feel so stupid if like Ezrin dies next episode or something like that. <laughs> I'll put this question to you guys. If Ezrin ends up riding the dragon, right? If he becomes the dragon's master, what would you call Ezrin in that role? I can't believe I'm gonna learn magic from a real mage. How do you know I'm real? Uh... That's what I said. Don't worry, I'm real. Are you though? <laughs> yeah, she's real. A real jerk. <laughs> for feeding them grubs and then telling them it was grubs. They could use the power of the Nexus to open a portal to another plane. A shimmering world beyond life and death. The spirit world? All jokes aside about this lady, I'm actually really interested in the plotline of Callum developing his magic skills. This seems like a whole other level of magic from what he's been doing. Some signs of remorse. It's subtle, but you can see he has some regrets. I can't help but wonder if him being in the king's shoes sort of gave him a new perspective on the king's failings, or perceived failings. I feel like there's a karma in every new endeavor you take. Like, for example, I always hated school, but when I became a teacher, I had so much more sympathy and respect for my teachers, you know? It's really easy to, to judge and observe from the outside. It's a different thing when you step into the responsibility yourself. You realize there were all these circumstances that you didn't anticipate, all these feelings you didn't expect, and there is a pressure from those circumstances that leads you into being a certain way. And you're like, that's why people did that. That's why my teachers did that. That's why my bosses did that. That's why my parents did that. That's one of the biggest virtues of experience is you get that awakening to the things you hadn't considered. The more I think about it, the more it seems like Viren is sort of struggling with this role. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, right? I mean, he doesn't wear the crown yet, but his head is still heavy. He's doing it. He's amazing. Yes, yes, you can do this. <laughs> Humans can't do magic. Um, but I did do oh, what? magic. Right. With a primal stone. But oh. Then you smashed it. So now you're just a standard human again. This is sort of yeah, unnecessary. On the bright side, you've got those extra fingers. The little ones. Uh, what do you call them? Pinkos. Oh, well, hold on a second. <laughs> I got too excited. <laughs> I was looking forward to talking about fingers so much that I knocked over my microphone. Fun fact. Your pinky makes up at least 30% of your grip strength. So she may be able to do magic, but Callum can grip things real hard. So, suck on that. You can't make as solid of a grip without it. Hit the like button if you just tested your hand to see if you have strength without your pinky. But I know other humans who do magic. We do not call that practice magic. Right. Interesting. It looks like you could use some cake. No. You're too smart for old Shane's illusions. How about some nice old-fashioned iced cream? Something about this lady. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm doing my best, Rayla. And so are you. I know you are. Yeah, I mean, he was literally born yesterday. In Sadia, all creatures are born connected to a primal source. We call that piece an arcanum, a spark. Enough to ignite the world with its magic. I'm confused. I don't blame you. You're only human. Oof. Wow. So first of all, the arcanum thing is really interesting and adds a whole new layer of depth to the magic. Like if each of the elements has some kind of philosophical tie to it, that's really exciting. So just me being me and trying to connect everything to real life or something that's applicable, the arcanum thing makes me think of like awareness and insight into life. Like I feel like if you're not careful, you can sort of fall into a track of life and the track sort of takes you along the path of both instinct and norms. And when we're on the track, we can blind ourselves to the possibilities of all the things we could do or could be. And I think that insight happens when you see a way where that track is limited and you can branch off into an area that is now entirely in your own hands. And that's when things sort of get interesting. And I think there's maybe a meta insight, which is just that these things are possible in the first place. The insight that you can have insight is sort of one that you need. You need that spark to even begin the process of seeking it, of seeking different ways and seeking other ways to be. And also the insight that you are responsible for your own life and that everything that happens is in some way on your shoulders. And you have to navigate that. And you can navigate that successfully if you're awake to it, if that makes sense. So it seems like the mages of all these different elements have some sort of insight that allows them to have some kind of special ability to navigate certain areas of reality or life. So I wonder for the magic if there isn't also some kind of meta element as well that ties everything together. 
Don't give up on your dreams, Callum. Oh, but he doesn't have one. That's a rough deal for humans. What do we get? Shouldn't there a spell? Is that Claudia? I kind of like the song. Nice! It's all coming together. Do it. I really enjoyed the tone of the opening. I hope we see more of that kind of thing. And I also love this scene with Callum and the illusionist. I really hope we get more into that because that for me is really exciting. Uh, I'd love to hear the philosophy behind all the different elements. And I want to explore the idea of Arcanum more because that's super cool. And there's a challenge posed for Callum, right? Like he doesn't want to give up on magic. He knows it's his calling. And I believe he's probably right about that on some level, but what will it look like for him? Maybe there's something beyond the elements that he can do, you know, like a unifying thing that connects the elements that he can extract from. I don't know, I'll have to see, but I can't wait for the next episode. That was such a crazy cliffhanger. I'm going to take a guess about how the next episode will begin. Uh, it'll turn out that Claudia and Soren aren't real. Nothing is real. They're grubs. I love how this lady's power is literally lying. But that is the end of the beginning of season two. Before the video ends, I have to give a very special shout out to everybody who joined the top tier on Patreon this week. Good news about Patreon. Early access will be extra early. By the end of this week, Full Metal Alchemist will be one week ahead of YouTube on Patreon. And at the end of the following week, Dragon Prince will be one week ahead on Patreon. This kind of thing is possible because of Patreon support. So thank you to all my patrons for your continued support. Special shout out goes to Ellie, Alyssa Callahan, and Chris Palmer. Thanks to you and to all my patrons for all the support. Love you guys. I'll see you next time for the resolution to this cliffhanger in Season 2, Episode 2.